morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are glad that you're joining us online this morning. We're um, continuing to develop how we do online worship, and so you're going to experience um, a different place of worship this morning um, in my office. But we are glad that you're joining us. Um, just for a few announcements, um, this week and for the time being, um, we are offering online worship services only at 10.30 a.m. And I and on KRFS um, AM 1600 at 11 a.m. So you can join us on worship on the radio as well. Um, if you know anybody who does not have internet access who may enjoy that our worship service, um, please direct them to that radio time and place. If you would like um, to have the worship DVD delivered to you each week, please call the office and we can put you on a list to make that happen as well. The offices will be closed this week, Wednesday through Sunday for the Thanksgiving holiday. We'll be here Monday and Tuesday, however, so feel free to continue to bring in um, food pantry items or come bid on the wreath for wreath score, which I'm going to get to in just a minute. This week, um, we will do Devotions and Coffee on Facebook Live at 7 a.m. on Monday and Tuesday only due to the holiday week. Um, however, um, they will be on Monday and Tuesday, and we will come back the following Monday as well. Women's Bible Study will be Monday at 7 p.m., so join us for that on Zoom. If you would like an invite, please send me a message, and I will add you to our group. No confirmation or youth group this week. Um, because of thanks, the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, in fact, we probably will not meet as an active youth group for um, quite some time until our county comes out of the critical. Um, confirmation will continue to be on Zoom following the Thanksgiving holiday. Nichols County Ministerial Association Food Drive. Uh, please drop off non-perishable food items items during the month of November for the Knuckles County Food Bank. There's a cart outside the office for items to be gathered in and they're getting quite full, which is wonderful. We're in a friendly competition with other churches in our community. Uh, if we collect 500 items, non-perishable food items for the food pantry, they will get another $500 from Thrivent Financial Group. So please bring those in. It is critical that we um, get them all the help that they can get. Christmas in a bag. Let me talk about Reese Galore first. Reese Galore is a fundraiser also for the Knuckles County Food Pantry. Um, businesses around town have created wreaths uh, for um, people to bid on. And all the funds that are, will be gathered for that will go towards the Knuckles County Food Pantry. Bidding ends on December 4th. Currently, our wreath is at a bid of $110. They need to be $5 increments at least. So uh, the next bid would be $115 if, any, if anybody would like that. Now, let me bear with me for just a second. And I'm going to go to no, this one. So um, Christmas in a bag. This is... The, what the bags look like in um, lots of different bags, but these are going to be available for families or anybody, really. It can be just a single person at home, um, but all in the bag includes devotions and um, ways to light Advent wreaths um, throughout the, the Advent Christmas season. Um, there's the devotions for that. There are candles. There's a birthday cake for you to make a birthday cake for Jesus. On, on Christmas. There's a, a birthday candle for that. We have an ornament, um, all kinds of goodies in these bags. They are free. And if you would like one, if you would like to participate in this, um, feel free to call the office. We will arrange to deliver them to you, or you can come by the office and pick one up. Um, just other than this week, Jesse and I plan to be in the office daily. So feel free to come get one. Um, they are available starting on Tuesday. We're waiting on chalk and you'll have to get a bag to see what the chalk is for. So these are available for you. Um, know that I had those planned just prior to um, us being told we needed to go to online worship only. So this was something we were planning to do anyway. Um, along with that, 
we are going to, um, we've invited um, children to participate in our children's program. Parents, if you are watching and you have not gotten a text from me or Haley on questions to ask your children for Christmas, please get in touch with me and I will get those to you if you would like your children to participate. Uh, think about the Mother's Day and Father's Day videos that we have done in the past. It's kind of what we're going for with this, for you to record them and send those to me and we will share those in a video as part of our children's uh, Christmas program in December. So please uh, participate in that. This is what is going to make this Christmas season feel more meaningful is when people participate as well. Um, so please get those to us as soon as possible. Okay, bear with me just a second. Birthdays and anniversaries. Um, see, I got the screen next to me too. Um, this week, Mylon and Kathy Ray are celebrating their anniversary. Kelly Beret, Ber Kelly Beret's birthday is on the 27th and Ashley Beret's birthday is on the 28th. So make sure if you see any of them this week that you wish them a happy anniversary or a happy birthday. Now, peace be with you and also with you. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join us in our opening prayer. Let me get back to... Uh, let's do this. There we go. Now join me in our opening prayer. Tender, comforting shepherd, your steadfast love is present in this place and resides within each of us. But sometimes it is hard, so very hard to open ourselves to your love. We feel like scattered sheep, frightened and alone. Help us know your loving presence as we live as your gathered community. Enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which we have been called. Amen. Now will you join us in our praise song, 10,000 Reasons. <clears throat> Oh, 
for Holy Wiggle time. I'd like to invite any of our children to come join us for a mo moment. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're watching this morning. Today is a special day when we remember all the things Jesus taught us, and we look forward to the time when Jesus will come again to us. One of the grace, greatest lessons he taught was about how, what we should do to help others. He told them a story, his disciples, a story about a king who thanked all of his people for the good things they had done for him. He said that he was hungry, the king, and good people gave him some food to eat. He was very thirsty and did not have good water to drink, and the king thanked them for making sure he had good water. He said that there was a time when, the clo when his clothing was ragged and torn, and the king thanked them for the nice clothes and that protected him from the weather. He surprised them when he said that he had been sick and even in prison and he thanked them for their visits. It made him feel better. Finally, he said that at one time he was a stranger and they made him feel welcome. Well, the friends were very surprised and asked the king, when had they done all these things for him? He looked right at them and he said, if you have done this for anyone, you have done this for me. He reminded them that this was a mark of a disciple. And if they wanted to live the love that God had showered on them, then these were the kinds of things that they were supposed to do. But to the ones who said they hadn't done anything like that, he said that he was ashamed of them and that they weren't his disciples. You see, God wants us to reach out to others with kind words, thoughts, and actions. These things Jesus taught us. Being a disciple and a friend of Jesus is a great privilege and a wonderful opportunity to meet those in need. I know that you are becoming disciples of Jesus because I know that some of you have brought food for the food pantry with your families. You have welcomed other children to our church. You've given a drink of water to someone who need it, needed it. And I know that some of you sent cards or made cards to send to the nursing homes for our friends who are there that are lonely, really, really lonely and sick right now. You are on your way to becoming very special disciples of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for these children. I thank you for who they are becoming to be as disciples of you. Continue to work in each and every one of their lives. And all God's children shouted, Amen. Okay, and now we are going to bear with Pastor Natalie for a minute as we move to uh, prayer, joy concerns, joys and concerns. Um, we have many joys and concerns on our list. I want to start with some joys. Um, earlier this week, Ava Jean Gilkey was born to Craig and Olivia Gilkey, a very healthy, um, strong baby girl. And so we are so thankful for the, the gift of new life in our church. I also want to share the, that this morning um, at, 10, at 9 o'clock, we are baptizing, we baptized uh, Jackson and Ellie Carnitz. Um, their fathers, Brian Splater and Austin Carnitz, um, have became members of our church last year. And we are so excited that, that Ellie and Jackson got to become or got to be baptized this morning. Such a joy to my heart. And I love these kids so much. They are so wonderful. 
We also baptized Dennis Duffy. Um, and as a child of God, he's an adult. Um, he is the, the um, boyfriend of Pat Crockett. And we are grateful that he chose to get baptized along with Ellie and Jackson. So we celebrate those joys this morning. As far as concerns go, um, we want to continue to pray for all those in our community who are suffering from COVID. We have so many church members who have been tested positive this last week, and we lift them all up um, for, their, for God's continued healing in their lives and that, that it doesn't get worse. We also want to pray for the family of Lloyd Sporing, who passed away, um, Bill um, Sporing, who passed away this week due to COVID at Good Sam. We also want to lift up Kelsey Blevins and her family. Um, as many of you know, um, she was fired as our volleyball coach this last week and um, might be why I chose the praise song that I chose because um, she's special to our church. She is a part of our church and we want to support her and her family um, for whatever the future holds for them. So keep them in your prayers. I know that they have a lot of community support through this and so continue to pray for them. Um, we will support you, Kelsey. Um, do know that. We love you immensely. And you are such a talented singer and volleyball coach and teacher and a wonderful mom and wife. So we are praying for you. Um, if you have any other joys or concerns, please share those with us um, throughout the week and we will add you to our prayer list. Um, let's take a moment for some silent prayer and then we'll pray together. Amazing God, you have allowed us the privilege all during this year to walk the pathways of hope with Jesus. From your incarnation in Christ at the Nativity to his acceptance of the ministries to which you called him. From the magnificent lessons about caring and compassion as he trod, trod the roads leading to Jerusalem. From the encounters with hostile people to the cries of those in need and to his crucifixion and resurrection. We have been blessed to learn from our Savior and have our lives transformed by his redeeming love. Bring the joy of this day into our hearts. Flood our lives with your words of hope that our ministries may glow with delight at serving you by serving others. Bless this church as we grow and continue to learn what you would have us to do, even in the midst of this pandemic. Cause us to be a haven of peace and hope in this world that is bound in such anger and fear. For we ask these things in Jesus' name as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now want to invite you to, I'm going to put this up here so that you have, we really should have moved that code up higher. Um, I'll, I'll just say this first, that um, you can give safely online at our website or mail offerings to the church at 448 North Kansas in Superior, Nebraska. So if you want to jot that address down, you may. Or you can scan that code there on your screen and that will take you to our website. And you click give in the drop down box and you can safely give through PayPal on our website. Um, we want to encourage you to continue to give to support the ministries of the church. We've um, done taken a few steps. Um, it costs um, a little bit of a fee to um, go on the radio to meet the needs of those in our community that do not have internet access. We are also looking at ways to provide way, um, ways for kids to be able to come if we go back to online learning, um, that they can come here 
socially distanced, of course. And so we've upgraded our internet in order to make that happen too. So those cost a little bit extra, but they are reaching people in ministry. And so if you can continue to give faithfully, we appreciate that so much. We are shepherd and sheep, wounded and healer. In the same spirit, we are both giver and receiver. Even as we have so lavishly received, now may we generously give. Will you pray with me? Holy One, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. Through these gifts and in our lives, help us be the shepherds and healers and lovers that you call us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, give me just a second. We now want to um, go to our offering, or I uh, sorry, our scripture lesson for this morning, which is from Matthew 25, 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory, the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at the at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. When, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty, and you gave us something to drink? And when was it that we saw you, a stranger, and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in person and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You are the accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Whenever a new monarch has come to power throughout history, people have asked, what kind of king or queen will this person be? This year, we may be asking, what kind of president will our new president be? But today, we celebrate a king. For today is a day in the church, when a church year, when we celebrate the reign of Christ. And it seems appropriate for us to ask, what kind of king is Jesus? Scripture shows us that Jesus is an unusual kind of king, a shepherd king, much like his ancestor, David. What does that mean? It means that Jesus, in all his glory, lays aside his crown and picks up a shepherd's crook. In our Old Testament text, Ezekiel reports that God himself will search for a sheep and seek them out. It's interesting that God must seek out his sheep because they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. Sheep at the very best of times have very poor eyesight. And on a foggy day, they have very little chance of finding their way without some kind of guidance. Are we so different from these sheep, especially right now? We too have a tendency to be very short-sighted when it comes to staying on the path that we should follow. 
Sometimes even with good intentions, storms of life scatter us. The good news is that Jesus is still a shepherd king today. Jesus still seeks us out wherever we may have wandered to bring us back to the meadow where we can safely be under Jesus's watch. As the shepherd finds the sheep, he guides them to green meadows where food and water are plentiful. The shepherd provides for them all that they need. In Ezekiel 34, 15 through 16, God describes this in detail. He says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind, I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. A shepherd does so much more for a sheep than simply turning them loose into a hay field. The shepherd makes sure that they have plenty of rest and he goes after the lost sheep, collecting those who have strayed. The shepherd heals those who are hurting and builds up those who are frail. What a promise that is for us. I know that some of us may be feeling a little more frail than others right now, or maybe all of us are. All of us are hurting. All of us feel frail as we try to figure out this pandemic world that we are living in. Whatever our needs though, our shepherd king is already working to meet them. God's provision is not always what we are looking for or even what we think that we need. The verse we read just a moment ago does not actually end there. It goes on to say, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Sometimes the shepherd must act as a judge separating the flock. It seems harsh, but it is the shepherd's love that causes action. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. There are times when the shepherd must guide and lead the sheep along a path they do not wish to follow in order to make things right for the rest of the flock. Ezekiel's words foreshadow today's New Testament passage in which Jesus tells of his return. Here the king is in full regalia, shining in glory, sitting on a throne surrounded by all of his angels. While Matthew's image of the king differs from the shepherd in Ezekiel, the king's actions are the same. The king sorts out the nations of the world, putting some to the right and others to the left. The criteria for sorting is also the same. Those who have butted their way through life without regard to the people being pushed away by their actions are chastised. The sheep, those loyal followers of the king, they have followed the king's lead without even realizing that it is they, that it, that it was what they were doing. Their love for the one who cares for them has led to imitation. Thus they ask, Lord, when did we feed you or give you something to drink? When did we ever visit you in the hospital or in the jail? When did we provide a home or clothes for you? And the king answers, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. The shepherd king leads by example. Just as Jesus spent his time on earth with those society looked down upon, with those who most needed him, Jesus expects his sheep to do the same. Jesus walks along that path and he waits for them to follow him. The shepherd is not content for his sheep to simply be like the other sheep. They have more potential. And so part of his feeding involves leading them to a truer understanding of who they are and to whom they belong. Only those sheep who truly know the shepherd's nature are rewarded. And only those citizens who honor the king by loving other people will inherit the kingdom of God that has been prepared for them. And so we come back to our question, what kind of king is Jesus? Jesus is a king who will seek us out where we are. A king who provides for our every need. A king who corrects us and guides us along the path that we must follow. 
Jesus is a shepherd king who seeks us and feeds us and leads us so that we can prosper. It is up to us to decide what kind of sheep, what kind of citizens of God's kingdom that we want to be. Oops. Hear these words. <laughs> Hear these words as we go forth through the rest of our day. Go to seek the lost and bind up the injured. We will strengthen the weak and encourage the faint-hearted. Go to seek justice and love kindness. We will help the world know of the feast of God's justice and the grace of God's mercy. Go in God's peace. Amen. Oops. Give me just a second. Thank mm -hmm. you.